Hey everyone, my name is Zenia and I am a digital artist. And in this class, I will teach you everything you need to know to create a photo realistic photo manipulation. So for this class, we are going to use this photo and transform it into this one. So we are gonna go through all the steps that is needed to make this look like a real photo. We are going to brush shadows. I'm going to show you how to blend images together, how to create a background that looks real. So you can cut out any any object that you want and change the background and do all the other stuff like color blending and making highlights and all the other good stuff. So if you're wondering who I am, I create a lot of stuff with animals and the thing I always do is I make them look photorealistic. For instance, the technique that I used in this class, I also used to create this. This is also some old work for me that I also created using the same technique and also this one. And this one actually went viral on Instagram. You might have seen it on Instagram. It got shared a lot of times. And this is also shared by a page, Wildlife Planet. They have like 4 million followers. And this is another work for me. They also shared because simply it looks photorealistic. And this one also, I use the same technique for this one. And maybe you've seen my work on the Photoshop channel. They also shared my work. You can find it here and some other stuff. So let's not get into all this stuff. I wanted to tell you that this class that I have here, this is for beginners. So if you're just starting out with Photoshop, it's really easy to follow along because I'll explain every step you need to do. But even if you are an advanced user, it's going to help you to create stuff that looks like a real photo. So maybe you want to start with, instead of starting with cutting out subjects, you might want to directly start with the chapter where I just start editing. For instance, you can just skip the first two parts and just go on from the third one. So I hope to see you in this class and I will promise you, you will learn a lot from this. All right, let's open up Photoshop and have a look at the interface. So this is the start screen from the latest version of Photoshop. Yours might look a little bit different if you have an older version, but it doesn't matter. So let me start with creating a new file. And this doesn't matter here. I just want to show the interface. Now, if you look at the interface of Photoshop on the left side, we have the tools here, which we can select different tools to edit our image. Once you select a tool, you get the toolbar here with the options. So every time you select a different tool from the toolbar, this toolbar here, the option panel changes and here you can set the settings for that tool. Now here we have the file menu on the top side and at the right side we have our palettes. So if your Photoshop looks a little bit different, you can go to window, workspace and reset your workspace. Now, what I usually like to do is I like to get rid of all these things here because I'm not, I want to have more space in the working area instead of all this information around it. So if you reset your workspace and get rid of all these panels by clicking on this button here and close this, and that's it. And also close the other tools. The only thing that I would suggest to leave is leave the layers and the properties. Or you can also just get rid of everything because they're going to pop up back when you create something and it's needed to use that. So for instance, I have, usually I work like this with only the layers here and some channels and parts. They don't bother me here. So every time I select a tool, for instance, here, I create something and I will create some layer on top of it. This is going to pop up and I have these settings here and this is fine. You can even make it smaller. So this is how I usually like to work. Or like this, this is even better when you get a lot of layers in your file. In your document, you can put this here or drag this here so you can open up when you need this and that's it. So that's really easy to understand. Now, if your thumbnails look really small, you can go here and select panel options. And here you select the different size of your thumbnails. I'm using a big thumbnail because I record this for a tutorial so you can see this better. But I suggest you maybe want to take this or this one, especially when you have a lot of layers, it's better to use a little bit smaller size thumbnails. And also make sure to select layer bounds. I think this came out at one of the late versions of Photoshop. If you don't see this, don't mind it. It's not really important. Just a little tip. Use layer bounds so you can see what you're working in, in, in the Photoshop file instead of not seeing the image itself. So this is fine. 
All right, let's have a look at the toolbar on the left side. So here we have the move tools. This is a tool to move objects around the image. After that, we have selections tool. These tools are used to make selections of things in your subject. Here we have the crop tool. With the crop tool, we can change the size of the image. We can also select different dimensions here. For instance, if you want to create something for Instagram, four by five will be excellent because that's the size of Instagram. And we have other things like square and all the other stuff. Now, moving on. Here we have the eyedropper tool, which you can use to select colors. So if you select this and you click on a color in the image, it's gonna select here and it's gonna change to that color. Obviously this is white, so you can see it changes to white. Next, we have tools to remove objects in your image. This is good if you like work on portraits or something and you want to get rid of some pimples and stuff like that. That will be really good to use one of these tools. And also the clone stamp tool is also good to remove things from your, from your photo. Now moving on the brush tool. This is a really important tool for photo manipulations because in photo manipulations you're going to use a lot of brushing. And when you select the brush, you can open up this brush settings. And here you have different settings. And here, these are brushes that I downloaded. These are just free brushes that you can download on the internet. You just import them into Photoshop and you get them here. So for instance, if I want to create clouds, I have like different cloud brushes and I can just make clouds. All right, let's move on to the next tools. Here we have the eraser tool to just erase things. But I'm going to show you the another way to erase things. So I don't really use this one. Here we have the gradient tool to create gradients, also important for this, for photo manipulations. And here we have a blur tool to blur out things, to sharpen things, and to smudge things. Here we have the dodge, burn, and sponge tool. These are really important. Well, the sponge tool isn't really important because I don't use it. But the dodge and burn tool is really important when you use it for photo manipulations. With the dodge tool, you can make things lighter in different parts of your subject. So for instance, if you want to create some lighter parts on something, you can use this tool. And if you create dark parts, you use that tool. We will also go through this, these tools to create good photo manipulations. Now moving on, we have the pen tool here. The pen tool is a really good tool to make advanced selections. So if you want to cut out a human or a car or anything else, you use the pen tool to make an advanced good selection. It takes more time to use this tool than to automatically use like something like magic wand tool, which automatically selects your subject. So try to use the pen tool always because it's the best tool to use to cut out subjects. Moving on to the text tool. This is to type text, maybe for a flyer or poster or whatever. And these tools I don't really use. So you can like do like different shapes and stuff like that. It, this is not something you're going to use in photo manipulations. And here you can move the document around and the zoom tool to zoom in and out. I zoom in and out by holding down alt and scrolling my mouse. So I don't really have to select this tool. So the best way to learn is to also get known to shortcuts. So every time I will create something, I will uh, tell you which shortcut I use. And that way you will use that shortcut instead of selecting this tool and zooming in, changing to zoom out and stuff like that. It takes a lot of more time. And here we have the color selection tool. So every time you want to change a color, just click on this and change it to something you like. And here you have the background color that you can also change and you can rotate these. So that's really easy to understand. And the best way to obviously learn is to actually do something instead of going through the theory of it. So let's just start off right by doing a photo manipulation right now. All right, let's start with creating first thing I would like to do is to open up the file that I want to use. So for this, I could go to file open, or I can just simply drag it into the Photoshop screen to open this up. Now, the first thing we need to do here is to get rid of this background so I can create my own background. Now for creating backgrounds, we need to make sure to get rid of this one first. And for this, I would use the pen tool that you can find here or press P on your keyboard to select the pen tool. Now here you want to make sure to select part and not shape because we want to make part of it and make sure to have select this one and start with zooming in. Now to zoom in, I'm holding down alt and scrolling my middle mouse. So I don't have to select the zoom, zoom function here. So this is really easy. 
And if I move the subject around, I hold down the space bar and I just click and I move it around. So this is really easy so I don't have to switch between different tools. Now the first place I would start is somewhere here and just make one point. Now I make another point somewhere there, hold the mouse and make a little curve. Make another point, hold the mouse, make a curve. And this way I would go around the whole subject to make a selection like that. So I'm going to do this really precisely because this is like a main subject and I want to make sure you don't see bad cutouts of this image. Now, if you go around the subject like this, you can do this slowly to get used to it. And sometimes you don't want to make this curve. For instance, if you get to points like, like this, here you can see it goes like that way. So the best way to do this is to make a point here. So if you don't see, this doesn't work. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z to go back. And if I press on this point, make this curve, hold down Alt on my keyboard, while hold it on the mouse, bring this anchor point to the start. And that way we are starting from a new point without this curve. And that way I can create a nice curve that makes the subject better to cut out. So also when you get to this point, you need to go back. So I'm going to bring the anchor point back. And the same for this one. If you want to have it really precisely to get this like like this art edges and make it look good. So all these little things that will matter if you do this precisely because at the end you will see this all if you don't do this good. So try to do this until you are around the whole subject and you have a nice cut. Now once you have the selection, just go to the first point again out of the artwork board. And here you want to select the first point again to close it. Now if you press right mouse, we can select make a selection. And here we have the radius that we can set. If we set it to zero pixels, we have like zero feather. That means it's like a really straight edge without a little bit of blur in it. So I would set this to one to make sure it looks a little bit more realistic, like a photorealistic cutout. So don't use zero, use one most of the time and that's fine. Press OK and we have our selection. And the next thing I would need to do here is to make a mask of it. If I click on this one, it's going to make a mask and we have a selection of our subject. And now there are some parts that we also need to do like this part here. So I would do basically the same, go around the subject and make the selection by closing it. Make sure to always have this selected because when you have this selected, you're working on the image itself and we want to work on the mask because we are getting rid of the background. So make this selection again, make selection, do the same steps. And if you press D on your keyboard, so you have the black background color, select this and press Ctrl or Command backspace and that's gone. So that's really easy to understand. Let's start with creating with this. So for this, I would create a new file first. So I can either go to File, New, or press Ctrl or Command N on your keyboard. Now I want to make something vertical. So I'm going to go for 2160 by 2700. And that's fine. Leave the resolution at 72. This is fine. This doesn't really matter. All right, now press Create, and we have our file created. Now the next thing to do is to go back to this file and just simply use the move tool and just drag it right into our file. Now, when we resize things in Photoshop, it's gonna ruin the quality unless we are making a smart object. So when you have a selection, press right mouse here next to it and convert this to a smart object. That way we are creating like a hidden file of this subject. So if I press right, double click on this, I can open this up and do some changes here and save it and it's going to look at the same at this file. So I don't need this, but try to remember to always use uh, smart objects because if you don't do that, it's going to get ruined when you resize it. So next thing to do is we need to make sure this fits our image. So if I press Ctrl or Command T on the keyboard, it's going to open up the free transform window. And here we can rotate this and make this bigger or smaller. So in the last version of Photoshop, some of the last versions, you can rotate, uh, make this bigger and smaller by just doing this. In all the versions, I think you had to hold down shift so it doesn't stretch out like that. 
So this depends on which version you have. If you have an older version, you need to hold on shift to make sure it doesn't get like that. So for this, for me, it's fine. I can just stretch it out like, like I want to and put this where I want to. So let's put it somewhere here and make sure it fits the image. This doesn't matter because I'm gonna make sure you won't see that later. Just make sure it's somewhere in the center. I think this looks fine. Next thing to do is to import our butterfly. I have this butterfly that I found and I can just drag this here. This is a PNG file, so I don't have to worry about cutting this out. So let's put this somewhere there. Make sure to have like realistic sizes. I have seen a lot of people that create something and the butterfly or the other things in the image doesn't have realistic size and it just doesn't look real anymore. So try to spend a little bit of time on making sure it's the right size because if you do it like this, it just looks weird. It doesn't look he's at, like he's looking at it. So make something realistic like that. All right, next thing to do is to import our background. You can see here on this image, let me remove this and show you, we had a green background. So to make this look realistic in this one, I would also use something green and not, for instance, blue or something, because we have all these things here cut out and you can still see a bit of a green of that. So try to use also the same color tones as the original image. So I'm just gonna import this background press enter and move this layer underneath those. So these layers are like stacks of, you can compare that with stacks of paper. If you put something above the other paper, you won't see the thing that's underneath it. So try to put this background here, control T again, and let's make this really big. So I don't want to see this, these humans in the background. I only want to have like these trees and stuff like that. I'm just going to make this really big and put it somewhere like that. Maybe this is fine. Maybe even like that. I can also eventually go to edit transform and flip this horizontal because I wanna have like this left side lighter than the right side. So I'm gonna do it like this. All right, next thing we need to do is to make sure this looks real. So to make things look real, you need to blur out the background because we have a close up shot here. So to blur out backgrounds, I'm using filter, blur, lens blur. But because it's a smart object, we can't use this one. So we don't have to make smart objects for the background. So what I'm gonna do is press right mouse and rasterize this, and it's not a smart object anymore. Then go to filter, blur, lens blur. When you blur out backgrounds, it's better to use lens blur because that's good like a real photo. And if you use other blurs, it's not good for the background. So try to use lens blur for backgrounds and here you can set the radius, how much you wanna blur it out and here you can see the example outlooks. So we can make this like really blurred out because we have a close up shot here. Let's blur this out and see how that looks on this image. All right, you can see here, this looks pretty good now for the background. Don't watch this stuff here that we're gonna fix later. And now we can move this around until we find a nice spot that looks real. So. Usually I try to watch these parts here. You can see here we have this cut here and you can see it a little bit, it's not real. So try to find something like this, for instance. You can see it, it gets already better and it looks more real. So I probably would use something like this, maybe move it a bit around until I got a nice spot where I want this. Let's use the white area here. All right, I think this looks fine like this. I'm gonna leave it like this. Next thing we need to do is to make sure these things here, you won't see this anymore. So let me first move this a bit around because I feel like maybe you can rotate this slightly like that. Now I wanna make sure you don't see this stuff here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press right mouse and also rasterize this. And now I'm gonna select the blur tool because I don't wanna see these things here. I'm gonna blur it a bit out because in the original image we had also a blur. So select the blur tool here, you can set the strength, how strength you want. So if you have 100, it's gonna blur this out really a lot. If you set it a bit less, it's gonna blur less. So use the blur tool and start brushing these parts to blur this out so it blends better with this background. So just do it on these parts. Don't do it on this part because you can clearly see in this image we have all focus on his eye here. 
So don't do it here. Maybe a bit here. I will drop the strength here a bit. So you can see it doesn't do it too much, but a little bit. Let's do a little bit here. Here we can do a bit more because you can see it was blurred out on the original one. And never mind this one. We will fix that later. Let's do some blur here. Let's do here. Also these parts. And just basically around the edge where we had the blur on the original image. I think this looks fine. And now you can see it looks already a lot better than the original one. Maybe a bit more here. I would eventually increase the strength here and do a bit more here. Make sure it's really blurred out. So we have all our focus on, on these areas here. And this is stuff in the background. It's like when you use a real photo, you will see stuff blurred out in the background. And this area will be sharp. All right, now we can start on hiding these flaws here. So this part here, instead of trying to cut this out really good or trying to add some stuff here to it, I would hide flaws. When I Usually when I create something and I see flaws in this image, I try to hide it. And the best way to hide things is to have something in front of it. So for this, I would use these branches with leaves here. Let's make this really big. Just import these and put them above all the other layers and put it put it like that in front of them. So now we can't see it anymore. So that's really easy to hide things and look at make it look like a real photo. But they need to be blurred out because we are focused on this side, this area of the image and not here. This is close to the camera. We can even make this bigger to make it look more real like that. And now we can blur this out to make it look like a real photo. So for this, I won't use lens blur, but I'm going to use blur, Gaussian blur. And with the Gaussian blur, I can make like photorealistic blur, like stuff is in the foreground like that. And you can see how beautiful this makes this whole image. Press OK, and that's it. And now you can move this around until you have something that looks really nice. Maybe even like that. You can eventually rotate this a bit. So it doesn't really ruin the image itself, but just a little bit of blur on the sides of this image like that. Now you can even see that we don't even need to blend this better because the green really fits the green of this image. So this looks fine. I would also duplicate this. If I press Ctrl or Command J, I can duplicate this layer. And I have another version of it. And I can also maybe add some here to fill these areas a bit more up with these blurred out leaves maybe even here let's rotate this go to flip transform flip horizontal and place some here i would also hide this a bit when you see this this area here so it looks like we have like really nice depth in this image when i do this maybe one more let's put let's put some here to get a really nice depth so this way we are create we created some depth in this image you can see here, this could be even blurred out more. So I'm going to do a little bit more blurring here. I feel like when you blur things out, you don't get distracted by it, especially when it's like in the background. So this is better. All right, let's work on the lighting of this image. We have a couple of layers here now, and it's going to get a lot more. So the best way to organize this is to hold down shift and select the layer that belong together. For instance, these foreground layers, select them all, press on this folder here, and we have one folder. Double click on this and give it a name like foreground blur. And we can simply just disable this, enable this, whatever. So this is really better to organize things. Let's also put this lizard here in a folder lizard. You can either just make a folder, drag it inside. And this is our butterfly, also in a folder. So this is really good to organize things. And if you press right mouse, you can even give it the color if you want. But I barely do that. I just make folders and this is fine. And we can also make like a folder for the background if you want to. All right, now we have a background. Now we have folders for everything. Now we can start on working on the lighting for these different subjects here. So for this, I first want to define where is my lighting going to come from. If I want my lighting coming from there, I need to make sure this side of these animals, this, this lizard, this butterfly is going to get darker. So 
let's imagine our lighting will be coming from there. We can, let's make a new layer and select the brush. And if you go here, you have the brushes that you can select, just select a normal soft round brush, bring the opacity all the way up and bring the hardness all the way down. So we have a soft brush. Select white as your foreground color, make it a bit bigger. And just let's make that white a bit yellowish so we can see this better. Make it a bit bigger like that. All right, this is our lighting. Gonna make it bigger. If I change the blend modes here, I can create different type of effects to this layer. So these blend modes are to make it darker. The first two are, well, most used. Here are also the most used. And this is these are to make it darker. These are to make it lighter. And this is other effects. And this is more creative stuff that you barely use. And this is for the colors. So for the lighting, I want to make it lighter, obviously. So usually I select screen. And you can see here, we get a nice beautiful glow from coming from the background now. But because we have this glow here now, we need to make sure the area here on this lizard is gonna get a bit darker to look at more like a real photo. So for this, I'm going to select the lizard layer here, this one. And if I go down here, I have adjustment layers here that I can select and this will affect the layer underneath it. So for this, I'm gonna select curves. Curves, I always use to create lighting. So if I click on this, and if I click this button, it's gonna only affect the layer underneath it. So if I disable this, it's gonna also affect the background and stuff underneath it. I don't want that, I only wanna affect the layer underneath it, only this one. So let's press this. If we move these sliders around, this, this curve I mean, this, these are the highlights here. So if we move this to the left, it's gonna get really light. These are the midtones here that we can move around and these are the shadows. Now we want to make this a bit darker. So obviously we need to drop the highlights lower like that. Now you can see this image changes and we want to create something darker. Let's move it to this point, not too dark. Right now we have this dark area, but we need to make sure this area will get lighter again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on this mask, then select the brush and make sure to have a black brush. With a black brush, you can get rid of some parts and with a white brush, you can bring back some parts from this layer. So press on the mask of it, select the black brush, make sure you have opacity and flow at 100 and bring the hardness down. Make sure it's a soft round brush. This is a standard brush in Photoshop. Let's make this smaller. And let's start brushing these areas back to light again. And now you can see we get a nice beautiful shadow on this side and this side will be lighter. So you have you need to have a little bit of imagination where the light is gonna hit this lizard. So obviously here, because lighting is gonna come here, let's do a bit here. Let's also do this hand here, 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 like that. Maybe also a bit here. And this will be darker. Now you can see the differences. If I disable this, it's got darker. And if I want to create a bit more contrast to it, I'm just going to select the mid-tones and drop this a bit. Maybe not too much, just a little bit extra. All right, now we have some shadows here. And now I'm going to do is, I'm going to use the Dodge and Burn tool to make this even look better. Let's move this a bit to there. So we have a nice glow coming from there, not too big. All right, let's create a new layer here on top of the curves layer. So I create a new layer, press right mouse and create a clipping mask. If I create a clipping mask, you see this arrow, it's gonna only affect inside this layer. So inside this selection. So if I go to edit now, fill and select 50% gray, press okay and we have like this gray color inside this lizard. If I change this to overlay, you won't see this anymore and that's exactly what I want. I just want this layer to work with. If I don't have this layer, I cannot use the, the Dodge or Burn tool because you need something to work in. And if you're gonna work directly on this image, you can never change it or get rid of it later. So it's better to use 50% gray layer for this. This is only for the Dodge and Burn tool. All right, let's start with the 
dodge tool. With the dodge tool, I can make areas lighter. So let's select the dodge tool. And here we have the settings. Let's go for mid-tones exposure. Let's do around 50% and make the brush bigger. And just let's start brushing a bit. So now you can see these areas are getting lighter. And this is what I usually do to lighten up highlights. So these areas that got lighter, I can make them even lighter. Let's do also these sticky things that this lizard has. Let's do a bit here. Now you can see if you do it too much, it's going to get all white and we don't want to do it too much. So let's drop the exposure here. Let's do a bit more here. So we have a nice, beautiful glow here. Let's do this part, maybe a bit here. These are just little things. Let's also do a bit here. Let's leave this part because this is where the shadow is. All right, this is our highlights. You can see the difference. We got nice highlights now. Let's create the same 50% gray layer again. Create the clipping mask, go to edit fill, 50% gray, change the blend mode to overlay. And now I'm gonna select the burn tool. And with the burn tool, I can make shadows. So let's select highlights. When you doing shadows, it's better to start off with highlights first. Let's say around 40, 50%, maybe even less. And you can see, you can see here, I'm making shadows now. You don't have to do this much, just do it a little bit. So we have nice shadows. This image already has shadows, so I wouldn't do this too much. Now, once you got a little bit of mid-tones done, go a little bit of highlights and go to mid-tones and drop the exposure and do a bit more. Now let's do a bit here. You can make this small. Let's do a bit of this eye here behind him. Like that, maybe some shadows here and drop the exposure again. Let's do a bit here, here. All right, I think this looks fine. I don't, don't want to do this too much or else it's going to get ruined. So if we compare this, how it looks, this was first and this is now, and you can see the light matches the shadows and highlights now. And now I can move this a bit around because I feel like I don't want to ruin this image too much. Just going to do it like this, stretch it out. Something like this. Maybe this is even a bit too dark now, so I can go to the curves here. And let's bring this a bit up. So it doesn't get really dark because it photo looks still like daylight and to make sure it's right. And this shadows, I would eventually drop the opacity here so you won't see that much, just a bit also give this butterfly some curves to make this darker to give it a bit more shadow make sure to select this so it only affect the butterfly let's get a bit darker and just brush these parts away because we have lighting from there and make sure some areas are lighter instead of like a flat image with no highlights this is better like that all right now it's time to work on the colors here to blend this better together so you need to make sure the colors match together. Now for this, I would first, let's first do the background. The background here is really light. So I'm going to create a hue and saturation. And this is what I usually do to blend images better together. I would select hue and saturation for the colors. Make sure to press this again. So we only affect this layer. And I would like to drop some color from it. When you drop colors from everything, it's going to look better together directly. So this is really easy trick to blend things better together. And when you're done, you can increase the color scan. So let's drop this like around this range. I think this looks fine. It already looks more real. Let's do the same for the lizard. I'm going to put these, these darker things a little bit less opacity. I feel like it's a bit too dark like that. Let's do some hue and saturation on this lizard. Make sure to press this. You can see here we have like this text of adjustment layers on top of it and everything affects only this lizard. Let's drop this bit down like that. So we get less color. It blends better together. And eventually if you want to change the color, you can use these sliders. So if you want to make it more like that, maybe this even works for this one. Let's make it more like the background. This looks better already. All right, let's do the colors of, let's see these leaves. 
I have this sleeve. So what I could do is I could put this in a folder inside our folder and do unit saturation. So I directly infect this whole folder of it. Let's get rid of those colors. Move these sliders a bit around and I think this looks fine. And let's also do some color from this butterfly. So here in saturation again, and let's see if we can change this a bit, a bit less color. And we can eventually even change the color of it if we want to, but I still wanna have this like a real photo, so I'm not gonna do this too much. All right, I think this looks, looks fine. This is basically done. There are some next steps that you could do, for instance, apply presets in Lightroom to give it different kind of color tones or just play around with the settings and you can create different stuff. You can also do camera raw filter, which you can find here, but I'm not going to do that because not everyone has camera raw filter. So I'm just going to leave it like this because this class is about how to make it photorealistic. And I think this looks pretty much photorealistic. So all the steps after that is just extra. All right, at this point, I have everything as I want to. So I want to do some final adjustment to this. I'm going to create a new layer on top of everything. Press Command or Control on Windows, Alt, Shift, and E. So we have a duplicated version of everything. Convert this to a smart object, then go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Iris Blur. And here I can give more focus on the main subject here. So I want to make sure these areas around it are blurred out more. And here I can set the amount of blur. This is way too much, but I want to make it look like a real photo. So I won't do it too much, but a bit more blur on the edges of everything. And you can move these, these points around to see where it ends and starts. So I want to make sure the blur doesn't blur out our subjects, but just the stuff around it. Maybe even a bit more like that and just place it. Oh, that's way too much like that. So this gives that extra feeling to your image to, to like a real photo. And once you're satisfied, press OK and that's it. And this is done. So you can see the difference here. It gives a bit more blur, maybe even a bit more. Let's do it a bit more like that. So this is the good thing about smart objects. You can always double click on it and change it again. So this is fine for me. You can see we get a bit more blur. So that is it for this one. So thanks for watching. You can always apply some presets in Lightroom for instance to change the colors and stuff like that. But this class was about how to make it look photorealistic. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this class and I hope to see you on the next one.